I'm gonna play the theme song. I made it myself. Oh, right? <laughs> Welcome back. Bonjour. We're here for season two. We have, let's fucking get right into it. We have a guest. Surprise. Chris what a waste of a first guest. Dressed up. <laughs> What the what a waste of the first dressed. Yeah, I don't look good whatsoever. You look great, right? man. You look so, great. We're glad you're here. I really needed to hear that. Jeffrey James. Of... This is as good as I'm ever gonna look. That is true. You look I, great. I was at his wedding. And this is, is my wedding suit. That is the best he has ever looked. Chris, how how well do you think you looked on your wedding day? Um <laughs> got it. Not as good as I do now because I didn't have a mustache. Got it. It looks really good with the mustache. You have a better mustache you. than me. No, you you got a strong stash too. You no, have a no smile profile. without teeth. Smile without teeth. See, I don't have that. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jeffrey Was that somebody James. burning in hell? No, man. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey James is a writer, actor, comedian from Cleveland, Ohio, who now resides in Los Angeles. Is that fair? You don't have to read the whole biography. That's fair to say, though. We've got your wiki up. Host That's of correct. the HeadGum Podcast and close personal enemy. Frenemy, I would hope. Frenemy, yeah. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Hilled Welcome. Kings Welcome Podcast. The Hilled, the Hilled I wish Kings. Chris's last name fit into, sounded yeah. like Kings and something. Yeah, I was going to say like Thrings or something. Yeah, Chris Thrings. The Hilled yeah. Thrings Podcast. <laughs> My last name canonically is Thring. It's a pod. It's a parody of your original podcast name yeah. that is now not the name. Where we recap the episodes of us <laughs> recapping. That's exactly right. Did someone just walk into your home? My cat is meowing at me. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> illegal, I think. God, this is, uh, this is so many sounds per a, capita. He's a menace with the I'm a menace on the board, man. None uh, of them have anything to do with King of the Hill either. Just he's wait. driving the just, listeners away. Just wait. Some of them have to do with King of the Hill. Okay, I usually have to them. look for those ones. So you don't oh have God, them. So juicy. There it is. That's good. That's really good. That's a good one. Thank you, you don't think it should be all King of the Hill sounds? No, I think that would be too much, man. Too much of a good <laughs> king. Mm-hmm. Of the hill, duh. But this is the <laughs> King of the Hill <laughs> podcast. Uh, you have to work with this guy. <laughs> Not really. Not <laughs> very directly. No. <laughs> yeah. Lucky you. Uh, what's your comfort level with King of the Hill? Let's say. What's your familiarity? Familiarity is very different than my answer for comfort level. <laughs> what? Answer both. Let's hear both. Answer, yeah. answer both. Familiarity before this episode was z- literally zero. No episode ever? Never. Comfortability, Damn. low. I so, texted you my yeah, thoughts. Right, yeah. Uh, Jeff <laughs> told me he thinks that Hank looks like a scrotum. Yep. He's, that... he's, got, a, he's got a little bit of sag to him. He is a little, yeah. But you know, like so, Beavis and Butthead, right? Yeah, that's more iconic, though, I feel like. I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, I, I think they look like shit, too. Like, I well, want yeah, to... that's kind of the, that's kind yeah. of the point. <laughs> I just, Haven't you seen our aesthetic? You guys are beautiful, though. I want, like, hot cartoons. Wow. He thinks oh, we're well, hot. we'll he talk about hot, hot cartoons for... later on in this episode. Did you not see Luann? Luann... <laughs> Yeah, she she kind of has that bang, but we'll get yeah. into it. Yeah, no, yeah. we are we're Luaniacs, we're Lou Stans on this podcast. <laughs> so, and, Jeff, um, if you came into like not seeing any King of the Hill, was was King of the Hill something that you just like? Would it be one of those things when people would reference it, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, King of the Hill, yeah, I know that," or would you, or would you own the not knowing it, like? I and it's almost worse, Chris. I think nobody has ever brought it up to me until Brad really? told me about this Shit. podcast. That's what? wild. No yeah. one has ever. You're not hanging out with the right people, bud. Oh, I think I have been. You this is the only time out. that I've questioned it. Oh. 
<laughs> wow so welcome, welcome to a strange world yeah this is a yeah. uh, a whole subculture we have going on here well y'all are from oklahoma we should say well i'm from canada brad is from Fuck. Edmond, oklahoma. i don't know brad chris story. is chris is from edmund oklahoma i'm not from and edmund, born oklahoma. and raised where brad is from <laughs> and i lived in oklahoma never in edmund like chris mm. um but I lived there for a while. Chris and I have both spent a lot of time in Texas. So I think mm -hmm. that's okay. But my nice. my exposure with King of the Hill was from growing up in Canada, mostly. Is it a big Canadian fandom? No, it just came on after The Simpsons. And I loved right. The Simpsons growing up. I'm trying yeah. to make this a Simpsons podcast. Uh, so why didn't time. you just go to a Simpsons podcast? Because Chris wanted to do King of the want, Hill. I didn't want to do that. Yeah, Simpsons, I just, yeah. I was just kind of being nice, <laughs> you know? Um <laughs> But yeah, we'll we'll get into the episode. We'll talk about King of the Hill. Uh, Did you about tornado first watch? Yeah, episode tornadoes two oh two. How did you feel about it? You definitely watched it. <laughs> I did watch right it. Now? I took notes. Oh, oh cool. it was a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. I also didn't know that Greg Daniels and Mike Judge created it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of prolific so. writers. Toby from The Office, we learned. Uh, yeah. Was he, though? Or did he just sort of freeload? He'll be all over it. <laughs> there were some really funny lines. I think I. it's going to be hard for me. Like, I'm, I don't, after seeing one episode being the, today's episode's episode, I don't see myself watching this for pleasure or leisure. Oh, okay. okay. The aesthetic makes me disturbingly melancholic. See, I wonder what that is it's a little because too normal. for me, it kind of like soothes me. It brings me joy. I find because it... you compare your life to the show and you're like, oh, this is good. Well, I just like the color palette is kind of what I'm saying. Really? He... Yeah. I'm you colorblind. Can't trust him on... you yeah, can't trust never him mind. On colors. Should we get into our first fucking yeah. segment? I, I will know. say this was a good oh, one for like you to shit. jump in on because uh, this one <laughs> is nominated for an Emmy. It is. Uh, it's nominated for a flipping emmer dude. a primetime emmy not even a daytime it was a really good um it was really good it was a really good script it's fun thanks thanks man but before what? before we get into the episode and all of that we like to do a little thing on the show that we call this week in arlen okay <laughs> brad does a little project y'all ready for shit y'all ready for shit this week in arlen jeff if you're yes. not familiar, is the segment of the show where we talk about what was going on round town when okay. this year episode aired. This episode came out on September 28th, 1997. What do you think little baby Jeffrey Jams was doing? Yeah, what were you doing? I wasn't alive. Sunday night. You were born post-1997. <laughs> Are you fucking my butt right now? This, uh, well, September 28th isn't the only day in that year. It was two months after this was I born. Shit, oh no way. Yeah. We got him Whoa. We got him prenatal. The Babito. Don't say prenatal Whoa, that's awesome. in regards to me on this show. <laughs> that's the only request. Well, cool. Maybe you were, you were more Jane, than a dream at this time. Yeah, you were in you were in utero. I was, yeah. Stasis. And so was Nirvana. That was when the album came out, right? Yeah, I think no, Kurt Cobain was already dead when this... So we gotta figure some we shit out. Bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> we do talk about what was going on in your guys' lives. I was probably watching this episode of King of the Hill, honestly. You were four. I was, I was six years old. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was about Chris four. Chris was four. I was, probably, I was probably in bed by by the time this episode actually aired. Um, but I don't recall seeing this one in reruns. Yeah. Well, Duh. let's see. <laughs> well, well what's going on? ding. Uh, Bad Photoshop but, job. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of threw it together. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of bad, uh, TV, oh! TV Tango, the site that we use to look at the TV guide, still down. So drag them in the fucking That comments. is so funny. Those, that website has been down for weeks now. Yes. It used to look great. Uh, we always like to start by just taking a peek at what else was on TV this night. Uh, you'll notice in the 90s, there's a lot of TV movies airing. Yeah. It's not really a mm -hmm. thing anymore. Uh, but we've got Cloned, the Sunday night movie on NBC. I Wonder miss it was TV. also on ABC, dude. This makes me miss TV. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful World of Disney was the television premiere of Toy Story. 
Heck yeah, dude. That's insane. Fucking sitting down on a Sunday night with a bowl of popcorn and watching Toy Story. My mom God. loves Toy Story. Uh, classic Toy Story? To- <laughs> she would have no idea what Toy Story is. Uh, <laughs> My mom loves, loves Toy, Toy Story. Yeah, me too. Chris, uh, I, I don't mean to derail the show at all. Are you? Do you live in a hotel? Uh, yes, my life is a hotel. I've no, said this that the- on the show. I thought this room was a hotel. The first time we it really looks like you're at like a yeah. Marriott. I travel for work so much that I need a, a room in my house to feel like a hotel room, just so, so I that you always feel, feel like home. home. Yeah, this is the guest room. Mm-hmm. that is so funny. Yes, it's very plain. It's really good. An it's Edmond, Oklahoma hotel. Uh, it's kind of like Chris is is like minimalism. I'm like whatever this is, and then Brad is the maximalist of the three of us. See, you always bring up the background. The background I'm on the CRT podcast. I've toned it. I've pared it down a lot. Why? It's, why wouldn't you have King of the Hill playing on the CRT? Behind because, you? like I said, with the fucking sound it's bites, too man, much. it's too much. King it's of the Hill. It's a King of the Hill podcast. Yes, yes, the listeners don't want it thrown in their face. They like subtlety. They're fans of 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 subtlety of the written word and smart comedy, man. That I'll give you that. Let's yeah. So, yeah. but you were saying the TV guy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what was on TV. Followers or so, well, uh, views. Hey, got yeah. me saying it. Views. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I am just trying to make this a Simpsons podcast. Uh, yeah, the I'm episode that it. followed King of the Hill is widely regarded to be the worst episode of The Simpsons ever made. That's funny. this is What's this so is like about it. Uh, so they completely retconned Principal Skinner, and they made it to where like he's never actually been Principal Skinner, and he's been like stealing someone's identity the entire time. Oh, interesting. His name is Armand Tanzarian. And this was like literally the point where people started to point to The Simpsons and be like, this show isn't good anymore. So Oof. damn. Fun Don note Draper there bit. for The Simpsons. Yep, they jumped the shark. Uh it was also the pilot of the S- Jenny McCarthy <laughs> starred sitcom Jenny, which yeah. did, did not get picked up for a season two. They really loved in the 90s and 80s just being like, like if if Chris had a show, it would just be called Chris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you go back to the TV guide, there's there's a, a bit of that that we've been seeing on the TV guide. Shows named after people. Yeah. 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 Everybody it was definitely a big thing in the 90s. Uh, that weekend, The Peacemaker with uh, Kidman and Clooney came out. Wow. I've never seen it, but Nicole Kidman in an action movie sounds kind of crazy to me. Yeah. You, yeah. Right? Yes, we said we both said yeah. yeah. Okay. I've never seen this one. How I hard do you need us to agree with you? Harder than that. <laughs> uh The Edge with uh fucking Tony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin fighting a bear. Have you guys That's, seen whoa. this movie? No. I feel like this is just the remnant. Yeah, but it was this walked so Leonardo could crawl. Agreed. I think I'm more shitting on the remnant. Body. Yeah, I've actually never seen The Revenant, but this movie fucking slaps. Yeah. It's good. That was all right. Well, moving on then. Uh, the Misty album. <laughs> I'm sorry. Misty Alert. Uh, the Verve released their album Urban Hymns with that song Bittersweet Symphony. You guys know that song? Uh, yeah. Do, just do, I don't do, like. Do 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 do. They got sued by the oh, Rolling Stone. Shit. That song. Yep. They deserved it. It was Hillary Duff's 10th. <laughs> HBD. Her sweet 10. Her sweet 10. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was my queen for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris was yes. also a Duffman. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Duff stain as well. Shout out. Yeah. She's no Luann. <laughs> At least she's real. Uh, she- could it she was, play Luann though? Do we think she could? Yeah, maybe. That's actually maybe. really good casting because Brittany yeah. Murphy is famously dead. Um, infamous Nepo baby Olivia Jade's second birthday. She was the one with the college admittance scandal. Uh, uh-huh. Oh wow! She was Aunt Becky's daughter, and she's mm-hmm. Jacob Alordi's uh, lover. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh Lordy. Uh, booby god. Is that what you think their couple name is? <laughs> yeah, because Olivia J. Yeah. 
This was uh, nice. the headline uh, yeah. for the ABC as News. Hundreds flee a spreading wildfire in California. Charges of a conflict of interest in the John Benet Ramsey murder case. <laughs> oh my what gosh. Is is okay. And the so I thought this guy's name was Dino Dollars. <laughs> 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 but it's and he's an well. auctioneer. <laughs> They're Dino talking Dollars about was an early cryptocurrency. Actually, a lot of people well, don't know that. It's because there was a a dinosaur fossil that was auctioned off, and it was like the highest auction price <laughs> ever. This guy's name was Dino Dollars. <laughs> hey, Dino Dollars. Hey, I'm Dino Dollars. Hey, uh, he's a really slow auctioneer. You want to buy some dinosaur bones? <laughs> Uh, number one song in the country was Four Seasons of Loneliness yep. by Boys Two Men. Uh, Shout also, out Cleveland. Also, I believe the name of Jeff's autobiography. Uh, and it was a beauty of a day in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. High of 75, so what? man. That's high of really 75, nice. sep- late September. Sunny with Mama, a high of 75. Mama James was probably hanging out on the porch getting ready to pop out a babe. Enjoy. We didn't live late, in chagrin at that point. But late yeah. September day. Where'd you live? Uh, if you want to recrunch the numbers, we lived in uh, Auburn Township, Ohio. Fuck. Do you guys mind if uh, I uh, if we redo that segment? If I pull, we're gonna up? have to redo the, the whole, whole segment. Yeah, yeah, I think we might actually maybe the whole pod. There's no way on the accuracy yeah. of our powerpoints. Yeah, we we really take that seriously, man. Why that? I will say that while you pull this up, I'm going to get ready for... No, I'm not actually, I'm not actually oh, going to okay. pull it up, well, but we can't do. take a break. <laughs> <laughs> As the church bells ring near my house, signaling five o'clock, I'm going to crack one open like Hank. Ooh. Oh, shit. I'll Ooh. join you, man. Hold on. You guys ready? Yeah, we're fine. All right. Enough talking shit about me while I'm not in the room. Let's talk about the episode. <laughs> oh, episode two, That's season two of King of the Hill, uh, Texas City Twister. Uh, mm. When Hank learns Sounds Luann. Like Twister. That's really good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, if you could come in with more shit like that, that would I have Texas notes City that I'm gonna get Twister. to. <laughs> the first one I already said, which was Brad Hill. That was good, actually. Yeah, that was Flash Hill uh, King podcast. I don't want to make this about me though, which is why Chris needs to change his last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but synopsis: When Hank <laughs> learns Luann lied about the status of her trailer, he all but forces her to move out right as the Twister is about to hit. This one was written by Cheryl Holiday. Yes. Uh, I found her. This one was am, written by Cheryl Hines. Cheryl Hines, who went on to do nothing uh, <laughs> and marry no one. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl Holiday loves the booze. She yes, was born in bio, Texas sometime during the I've... Depression and migrated to California during the Dust Bowl. And then it's a picture of her drinking a giant margarita that I'll put up on the screen. Yeah. Her mini uh, bio cracked me up on IMBD. It was like this bio written by Cheryl Holiday on one of her midnight benders or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she's a raging alcoholic. Yes. Is that true? Um, that's what her bio says. <laughs> written by her. <laughs> self-referential, self-deprecating uh, even. She's a pretty <laughs> big deal, though. Uh, she's got a lot of credits to her name. Uh, there was an Emmy-nominated episode from the first season that she was also a writer on. She was on uh, Square Peg. Two Round Emmy hole. noms. Yeah, that's yeah. square peg round hole. Yes, you got it. Um, yeah, someone's watched the first season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's the just it's from the holiday. Protest. It's a holiday. You know they're remaking that. Why they just made it? It's no, not been long enough. That's a joke. That's a joke post. On okay, the internet that's it's going around. It's good, Thank God. Good, good way to trick the white girls on your Instagram and the brown men on this <laughs> podcast. Because I really you had me fooled, Chris. <laughs> All right. Step two, Texas City Twister, uh, directed by Jeff Myers. Uh, we mentioned earlier, nominated for an Emmy for outstanding animated program. Uh, oh, we got a cold open. Hank mm-hmm. walking into the kitchen, putting on his glasses, uh, leans in to kiss who he thinks is Peggy. 
and Jeff, you get to meet Luann in Curlers. Don't say uh, I get to, because she's animated. You have and, yeah. the privilege of meeting Luann. Okay, at this point in the show, I, the note that I have is the Foley in the show is far too loud. Yeah, I've actually yep. brought that up multiple mm-hmm. times. Yeah. Have you brought it up or brought it up? I've brought it up <laughs> several times, and I've brought it up. It, this looks uh, like I'm moderating... Uh, the a presidential debate, and I did I like didn't dress well enough. I yield my time. I also yield. This has never happened before. <laughs> uh, Hank, uh, Hank, Hank says that he's uh he's uh he, Hank says he's naked even though he's like almost fully clothed. And yeah, like, jacket. I, yeah, I also like that there was just conveniently a puffy coat sitting on the mm-hmm. chair for him to put on. Yeah. Uh, he's super upset that Luann is touching his underwear. Uh Peggy Her comes in. Yep, looking like a troll doll again. Mm-hmm. Uh and Bobby comes in Winnie the Pooing it. This may, mm-hmm. might have been my favorite part of the whole episode yes, when dude. he's like stoked about the warm laundry and like slips into his underwear. All... Yeah, dude. He was yeah. he was balls out leading up to that. Yep. This that was also really gross. <laughs> it's uh it's already it's already six AM and that boy ain't right. Yeah, that's kind of that was funny. That's kind of Hank's like boy ain't right. Doe don't have a cow. It's kind of like his catchphrase, Jeff. Which is that it's only it's not even six a.m. and the boy ain't right. Well, just just that boy ain't right. right. It's kind of like child abuse. That's funny. Is the point? Yeah, he ain't right. He's definitely not right. Yeah, he's a little he's a little wrong. But like warm laundry, fresh out of the freaking dryer. I get it. Yeah, it's just the thing. It, I don't know if you guys saw the Iron Claw, this clip from the Iron Claw where um, uh, I don't know if it's Efron or Alan White, but they oh, walk yeah. into like the in front of their whole family in like tidy whities and a T-shirt. I just I'm like, first of all, it's not a great look. Second of all, that's like not that's basically it. that is almost naked. I just why would you the bottomless thing around family? It's crazy to me. Oh, I'm about to bust. I'm one of four kids, so that was a that was a common <laughs> <Hey, John. laughs> What are you doing, step bro? Well, oh! <laughs> he's, I told you he's heinous with this shit. You guys gotta take, so you guys blue. Gotta take that away from yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, it is blue. You're uh, like, but- yeah, yeah, it is good. <laughs> I am. I am, I am awesome. funny. I actually am really good. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I am good at this. Uh, but yeah, uh, Bobby. Bobby leaves the room. We get a nice that boy ain't right. Solid, solid Hank catchphrase yes. there. Uh, we then see a ponytailed gentleman knocking on the door looking for Luann. He lets Hank know that she owes six months in back rent. He's from Shady Pines Trailer Park. A uh, little pines. bit of Shiny Pines. Sorry, Shiny Pines. Uh, shady back- Pines would make more sense. It would. It would, actually. That's actually really. The show ends there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks okay, for done. watching. Uh, just to give you some background, Jeff, Luann is Peggy's niece. Yeah. He lives with the family because she had a really rough home life. Mm-hmm. Um, She's from and, a broken home, literally. Yes. And nice. S- uh, something happened with her trailer. They mentioned it a lot in the last season. Uh, but this is the first time we learned that it it tipped over. Uh, her so parents had a fight. Hard. The trailer tipped over. Mama went to jail. And they hauled it off. With a fork. Yeah. Uh, Hank gets really defensive with this guy about Luann living there. Dude pulls out a wrench to threaten Hank. Yeah. Uh, and Hank, <laughs> Hank threatens him with a nine iron. He, yeah. This the came up. Like, um, that was funny. This came up the other day with some people. Do you guys know what a sock bat is? Mm-mm. No. You guys have What's never lived bat? in a rough that, enough area, I guess. That'd be like where you put a heavy object in a sock? No. So okay. I have one in the bedroom. I've had one a lot of my life. You take a baseball bat and you put mm-hmm. a sock over it. Yeah. So that when you swing it at someone, their instinct is to catch the bat, right? They ah. catch the bat. They're holding onto a sock. You I can see. pull the bat right out and fucking get them again. There you go. Everyone Jesus should Christ. everyone should have a sock bat. Sock your bats. Home home sock defense. Your bats, kids. If you're not socking your bats, uh, you're doing it wrong. But if they grab the bat and the sock, there's no guarantee that they if you yank the bat back that 
they'll just only hold on to the sock. Well, you have wise. to get a sock that has enough coverage so that they can't grab that wood. Yeah. You got to make sure they're holding only sock. And then if they catch the sock, it's going to hurt their hands and they're not going to be able to grab it hard enough before you pull. I see. The bat see the out of the sock. Yeah. This has been self defense with the Hill Kings podcast. Yeah, that was the self defense segment. Uh, so Hank threatens this guy. Uh, he leaves. Uh, shortly after Peggy gets home, we get a really nice line that maybe explains Peggy a little bit. Uh, she's talking about how she was offered a substitute teaching role for German, and German. she said nine because she thought that meant yes, uh, but it actually means no. Peggy is kind of dumb. She's. Kinda I got. Dumb. They're all kind of dumb, right? Yeah. Yes. A little bit, except Luann. She's smart. Yeah, Luann is ignorant she's not dumb she has she dreams just, she, she has, has dreams she has which dreams. is she has yeah. aspirations she has dreams uh, but we'll get to that <laughs> uh they come in and hank is just kind of sitting there waiting for them and mm. asks luann why why she's living there because <clears throat> she still has a home yeah no she, it i have a note from this over. scene i wrote proceed. down a note proceed proceed hank is so this is just i'm reading verbatim hank okay. is so fucking ugly I've never felt so strong. <laughs> I've never felt so strongly that a person animated or otherwise looked worse than this. He's pretty damn plain. It's worse than plain. Plain would be better. He he looks like balls. <laughs> he is and he has a farmer's yeah. tan. He's he does have a farmer's sure. tan. He is soft. He doesn't have a butt, which does come up later we'll in the series. Later, he yeah. he medically doesn't have a butt. Mm-hmm. All his ass is in other places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's kind of the opposite of you. He doesn't have that <laughs> wagon. I really needed the plug of that. Yeah. I don't need to Jeff, plug anything else later. Jeff famously has a What you saying about plugging what dump sir? truck? That yeah. Basically I'm plugged and that's <gasps> my plug. You're you're pl- okay. I... <laughs> I showed up to the Hild Thrings podcast. Uh, There's three of us. Yeah, it's really good. The Hild Thrings. We three, Hild Three Kings. No, we don't do that. Uh, Shit. What the fuck? (laughs) In this living room scene, though, I did think it was funny that Hank was like, uh, you have a trailer. And Luann's like, no, it tipped over. Yeah, she doesn't have a trailer. She doesn't have... She doesn't have... She doesn't have object permanence. Yeah. <laughs> it's not right in front of her, so it doesn't exist. You know, yeah. she's like a toddler. But she's no, because it's worse than that, because she's acknowledging that she does that she it's still there. So she has object permanence. No, she just thinks that it's too anything. Anything time something tips, it's useless. Yeah, yeah. Hank even tries to explain it with a beer can. <laughs> Luann gets upset. She says, I can't live in a beer can. I can live in a trailer, but I don't but have a trailer because it tipped over. <laughs> that was that excellent. Was, it's very well, obvious. So stupid. <laughs> it's very yeah. obvious that she doesn't want to live there because of the memories. And yeah, mm-hmm. also because she really loves living makeup. with the Hill family oh, and makeup. She does. She does. Uh, but Hank is too dumb slash blockheaded uh, and looks like a scrotum to understand that Mm -hmm. thank you thank you for acknowledging i do agree with you on that uh the boys are putting a winch on the truck out in the alley yep installing a winch this was my favorite scene (laughs) because of dale uh no wait no this might not be the scene yet they're they're just putting the winch on but uh what uh dale gets all excited and he like yells to nancy that he's going out tonight and nancy is like getting ready because there might be some weather coming in dale is like uh, she's a weather what about my supper and she's like i left a carton of cigs on the table (laughs) yes nancy uh famously in the show we don't really get any john redcorn in this This episode first episode where we just see nancy doing her job so the the main thing with Dale and Nancy, Jeff, is uh, mm. Dale has a son named Joseph who is very obviously Native American. Um, <laughs> and there is also this guy named John Redcorn who's mm-hmm. hanging around. He's Nancy's uh, masseuse. She has migraines. She has migraines. <laughs> it's very obvious that uh, mm-hmm. Joseph is not Dale's e- actual everyone, son. Everyone, everyone knows except for Dale. 
except for Dad. That's so yeah. funny. He's like it's a right wing funny. conspiracy nut job. He says some stuff about how the pyramids were built by Hebrew slaves, uh, mm-hmm. and they untipped the pyramid using a winch and a cinder yep. block. Uh, actually, which both common, of which didn't exist. Both of which didn't exist. Nice. Uh, actually, not true that yeah. the pyramids were built by slaves. That has been uh, debunked. They were volunteers, I think. <laughs> they wanted to be there. <laughs> it was in service of us yeah, talking about of, it. Yeah. In service Millennia of, later. It was in service of Imhotep. <gasps> Shout out, yeah. So slavery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so they're planning on going to use this sick ass winch to untip the oh, trailer, yeah, yeah. and all the dudes, like any fucking dude would be, are stoked. Like Hell if yeah, if we'll someone yeah. came up to you and they were like, "We're gonna go use a winch and we're gonna tie it to some shit, and we're gonna untip a trailer," you'd be fucking jazzed. Right? That is that part is of why that was my favorite scene. But we'll get to that. I jumped ahead to the next scene right after. What it's, you just, yeah, we go gotta, straight gotta, to gotta, the trailer park after. Gotta, this. Gotta, gotta, and, gotta, uh, that was the gotta, funniest scene. <laughs> Yeah. Trailer parks are the largest, some of the largest consumers of propane. Yeah, behind uh, school, uh, school buses. buses and crematoriums. Yeah, crematoriums. Uh, yeah, we get we get that really good line on the way to the trailer park. Uh, they winch it up real nice. Uh, they fuck it up big time immediately. Mm-hmm. Truck flips over the back of the trailer, um, and they finally get it by installing like some boards boom Hauer guns it uh and immediately drives into another trailer tips it over and they flee so that's a crime that was your that was your favorite scene though jeff one of your favorites yeah because <laughs> of the crime or well i i don't think it was like that what was it wasn't framed as some horrible crime happened i just think it was funny that they like tried to flip it and then it just flips worse in the opposite yeah. direction of yeah. the way they're towing and then the then they finally tip it right but then the car keeps going the truck keeps going and hits <laughs> the next one and flips it and then yeah. they just leave just i think that's so funny yeah and they definitely like were all shit-faced and drinking all day because day they drinking is a common theme in the yeah between the the guys who hang out in the alley but yeah they commit a little crime uh we cut back to the hill house uh i destruction yeah I really loved this interaction this, between Peggy and this Luann. This was one of my favorites. Like, do you think Alex Trebek is hot? And yeah, Peggy's yeah. like, oh, Alex yeah. Alex Trebek you're... is sexy. <laughs> get out of Peggy my says, mind. Get, yeah, get out of my mind, Luann. Which he definitely is. Can we all so agree funny. on that? Yeah. Alex, Alex, Trebek. Alex Trebek. Yes. Yeah. Rest in peace. And also, like, he can get it. Oh. You know? I did think that was a funny line. <laughs> right after that, I also have a note. <laughs> Okay. A line that I liked. Hit us with it. What? That card is just like cash. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, really good. Whenever yeah. she's leaving. Yeah. Yeah. She she's like leaves in tears. Card. And then he's like, what? He That's sells propane and propane accessories, man. <laughs> I sell propane and propane accessories. Uh, uh, yeah. So Hank comes home, lets them know that he has fixed the trailer. Luann is immediately upset. It's very obvious she doesn't want to leave. She's so pure. She's so kind. We stand her queen. Yes. Uh, I had a really funny line in here that Luann said, hey, Hank is asking her if she wants her own room. And she's like, what I want is a date with Alex Trebek. But it wouldn't, <laughs> what good yeah. would it do? Because I don't have a room. <laughs> she wants yeah. very funny. <laughs> she wants to like, bed him. She's she lusted wants to after bed Trebek. Trebek. And aren't we all? A lot of yeah. circular logic lines that I re- think are very funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, she, hey, uh, Peggy goes in to console her. She talks about how she has big dreams. She wants to do hair and makeup for TV and movies and fix Michael Douglas's fucked up Finally looking hide face. The bags under Michael <laughs> Douglas's eyes. And those are big dreams. Uh, those she are has big a dreams. she has a tearful goodbye with Lady Bird. Speaking of beloved pets, beloved pets. Lady Bird is one of my other favorite characters on the show, Jeff. She's an Do you think that that's dog. the inspiration for the Greta Gerwig film? Definitely, 100%. I think mm-hmm. that's actually confirmed by Gerwig. Is that true? I think Gerwig actually confirmed. That's she confirmed? Her. She yeah. followed up? She left word? Yeah, there was a Deadline article about it. A Deadline.com article? Deadline.com de- backslash Greta Gerwig confirms Lady Bird inspiration comes from King of the Hill forward slash underscore Lady Bird is the queen. The backslash Hill Kings podcast. Backslash Hill Kings podcast. Yes. Uh, Peggy comes out, kind of accuses Hank of being a dickhead. Pe- Hank is like, she's always crying. 
Like, how did I not notice that she was she crying? crying at, she cries at she, funerals. Yeah. She cries at weddings. <laughs> Normal places to cry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. She gives Hank the tearful goodbye, and he pulls out his card and gives it to her. That was also mm-hmm. a, a banger of a line. Because uh, it is like cash. Everyone did needs you, propane. Did you catch uh, Peggy talking about pack getting on the road before that Dr. Demento comes on? And Yeah, I'm not really familiar with Dr. Demento. Uh have you seen the Weird Al Yankovic, the new Weird Al story that comes out? The the Daniel Radcliffe movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't, actually. I haven't so seen Dr. it. So Dr. Demento's from the 70s. He's like a broadcaster, real real uh, kind of out there, obscure, kind of wacky type of guy. And he's Dr. Demento is who kind of discovered and put Weird Al onto kind of ah, some of his first airwaves. Interesting. Yep. I love Weird Rain, Al. Uh, Good reference. Rain Wilson. Uh, plays him in the in that Daniel Radcliffe Weird Al Yankovic Rain Wilson oh. plays Doctor Demento. Huh, Doctor Demento is still around and broadcasting. I need to uh, need to watch that. Yeah, oh, Harry icon. Potter. Yeah, that's not the reason why you should watch it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Hank is being emotionally distant. Uh, him and Peggy get in an argument about it. She calls. This him is a- also <laughs> sorry. She, she calls him a blockhead. He tells her to go to hell in a very roundabout way. Uh-huh. This and is my there's... favorite line of the whole, like, of the script of this episode. This is the funniest line to me. If I wasn't so in control of my emotions, I might say that hell is somewhere you should make a visit towards. Towards. Yes. <laughs> and then just a lot of slamming things. Slamming, <laughs> a scr- slamming like a sliding glass door is one of the funniest very fucking funny. things. That the, you it can bounces do. back. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And Bobby, we learned, is just sitting fucking right there the entire time. He yeah, is watching he's watching Nancy on the TV, which this isn't the first time that like they pan to the TV and just Nancy is on talking about exactly what is going on in the episode. Um and she's warning about the twister touching down, saying if you live in a trailer park, take caution because trailer parks are hell. Mm-hmm. Uh which is where in a trailer park. Hank told Peggy to go towards mm-hmm. potentially. Uh, have you ever been in or around a tornado, Jeff? Do they have uh, those in Ohio? Not like this, but Ron, they do Ron technically. OH, okay. OH state. Yeah. yeah. So not not like this, but there have been tornado warnings. Okay. I remember I moved to Oklahoma when I was 16. The first the week storm we were chase. there. Two storm yeah. chase, yeah. She my par- my parents chase. were storm chasers, but we lived in northeastern Canada, and there were just never <laughs> tornadoes. So they were like, we got to go where the action is. Yeah. Within the first week, a tornado touched down in my neighborhood. I was home alone. We had a, a shelter room. We out. called it we called it the Frady Room, which I believe they call it a Frady Hole. They call it the Heidi Hole, I think. Yeah, Heidi Hole, Frady Hole. hole. Um, I remember I was the only one home. All of the sirens started going off. I could literally see a tornado, and I grabbed my cat. I threw him in the Frady room and then accidentally locked him in there. Oh. <laughs> and you I saved the cat. I was stuck outside. <laughs> Me and our dogs were all going to, if the tornado hit us, we were all going to die, but the cat would have been safe, you know? Honestly, would have been fine, yeah. Yeah. I've been around them. I did have one other. Nancy has a funny line in her weather report saying that this is not a test because Channel uh, Channel 84 doesn't play those games. She's like, this is not a test because if we don't play those games, it's, 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 it's very, like, a very typical, like, Oklahoma, Texas, like, meteorologists are weirdly super famous they get there. Amped. Because of yes. tornadoes? They're yeah, because, yes. yeah, that it gets the most airtime. They always get those, like, puff piece stories of someone who, all, like, they'll be on all day. Like, yeah, and they're, like, AM. billboards with, uh-huh. like, the weather person fucking in yeah. lane. They're, yeah. What's Mark the name Payne. of the, yeah. They used to come into a smoothie shop that I worked at, and it was just like, oh, they're here. They were yeah. like celebrities. And they wear I... special ties whenever the tornadoes come. Like, there's yeah. one of them that has like a sparkly, bedazzled tornado tie. It's a whole thing. Yeah, I was gonna. It could be cool to have like a tie where it actually starts wide like a tornado, and then gets <laughs> oh, just really a reverse good. tie. <laughs> yeah, business idea, merch for the Not show. That we don't want anyone to have that. Yeah, I'm cutting all of this out. 
Just yeah. that you mean like the last thirty seconds? Uh, thirty-four minutes. Yeah. Uh, but once once Hank tells Peggy to politely go to hell, uh, that's essentially our first commercial break there. Yep. Uh, the uh Hank and Bobby are loading up the truck to go and save Peggy and Luann. We get to see Bill in his army reserve mm-hmm. fatigues. It's uh, no respect. Shitting, shitty on obsessed with getting respect. <laughs> yeah, but he's a barber in the yeah. army reserve. Bill, Bill is the punching bag of the friends. Basically, every episode, yeah. Bill gets shit on. So I think he thought putting his uniform on would get him some defense from yeah. his friends shitting on him, but it absolutely yeah. does not. He's very sad and lonely. If you've ever seen Office Space, uh, he's Milton. I've never seen Office Space. What? Oh my gosh! So. Uh, D- Dale and Boomhauer are loading up with a camcorder to go do a little storm chasing. Storm chasing. Uh, I actually did know some guys when I lived in Oklahoma that did this. Shout out to Eric Paul and Slim. Uh, they There's were like, no way. Some <laughs> Slim. 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 Yeah, dude, Slim. Ball and Slim. You know. Yeah. They were uh they were very redneck type dudes that were also really into rock climbing and they would come into the gear shop I worked at all the time and anytime there was a tornado they'd be like hell yeah man we're gonna go fucking chase that down sail the footage um, to who <laughs> to the news Local man news it's affiliates. such a big thing all right all right very good yeah. answer to a very yeah. bad thank question you. thank you so obviously it's a, micro, it was that. it's a micro economy here in the state. Yeah, it really is. Selling storm footage to news channels. Yeah. Uh, Hank asks Bobby, in the event of something happening, do you know how to start a man's heart with a downed power line? (laughs) (laughs) There's really no wrong way to do it, he says. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Uh, So they head out. We get a nice little scene of, I love the scene. some crazy shit. Yeah, Dale does scare the shit out of Bobby and say something about how like an egg can go through a brick wall yeah at a at a, like at a level two that an egg can go through a barn door it could even go through two of them two barn doors if one was open <laughs> <laughs> and then bobby uh, bobby runs inside and grabs an, get egg an egg from yes. the fridge for some reason well he's he planning dale, on using uh, it as a weapon dale tells him that at level three uh, that an egg can go through a brick wall and they call it Humpty's Revenge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dale goes into this little, this Dale's conspiracy part right here cracked me up because he he kind of like zones out and he talks about how like tornadoes are like the end times. And he goes, uh, he says uh, that the, the soft shall be blasted through the hard. The strongest <laughs> of men will be reduced to the average, yes. to a woman of average yeah. strength. Average strength. That was another. That was the last line that I wrote down <laughs> that I thought was funny. Yeah, that that part cracked me up. Uh, so Hank and Bobby head out. We also get a nice little shot of Dale and Boomhauer doing their storm chasing. I loved that the second a drop of water hit the windshield. He Dale's fucking freaking bails out. immediately <laughs> and like almost kills Boomhauer because he's on the top. Dale is an exterminator, yep. which is why he's got that crazy van. And mm. Boomhauer is just fucking chilling on the like top of it, yep. holding on Some, for dear life. Just a big drum of ant poison falls out. Yep. Uh, Peggy, we also get a little shot of Peggy taking Luann back to the trailer and kind mm-hmm. of facing all the trauma. It's it's yeah. filled with broken dishes and broken dreams, as we it's know. The fork where Mama stabbed Daddy is there. There's yeah. the bottles from that awful <laughs> night. This from that a, awful night, is, yeah. that made me laugh, too. There's always this bottles. A, it's kind of a sad episode for Luann uh, yeah. a little bit. You hate um, to see it. I felt I felt for my girl in this episode. Hank kind of treats her like a dick. She has to go back and revisit this traumatic site, and then she's in a tornado shelter. Yeah. So it was a, he's, it was tough he's for just girl. sending her to her death. Uh, but Hank's truck breaks down on the way, mm-hmm. and they have to stop at the Megalo Mart for fuel uh, filters and potentially fruit pies. <laughs> <That's what> Bobby <laughs> is hopeful about. for the fruit pies. Yep. Uh. Hank, it's kind of like a COVID toilet paper situation in there. I had that written down. There was like the it's, toilet paper it's fight. It's just pandemonium. Hank needs mm-hmm. a fuel filter, and they only sell them in packs of 12. 12? I thought that was so funny, because that's so typical to those stores. He's also going to the register to pay for these, where in the background, everyone is stealing and looting. Yeah. <laughs> in the behind the that's register. funny. I didn't notice that. Yeah, I did. There's, there's I did people running in and out. <laughs> 
The fuel filters also look like shit in the same way Hank <laughs> looks like shit. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be an asshole. It's just not your style. No, it's not. It's not. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, it's not for me. I'm saying it isn't and shouldn't be for anyone. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Like, I'm not open to it at Shots all. Shots fired, brother. Yeah. Shots are actually fired. Oh, Jesus. Uh. <laughs> Hank ends up buying the 12 pack of filters. Uh, he gets stuck in a blockade. Bill is there. Bill's getting all sassy and butt hurt. Uh, tries to flex on him. Yeah. Tries to, yeah, kind of strong arm him a little bit. And Hank just speeds right through the bitch as the tornado is approaching. Yes. Shiny Pines. Look at that sweet Very little dire. kitty. And that's, a, that's our second commercial break. Oh, hello. His, Second yeah, commercial break. Off. Hank, um, Hank is feeling really guilty about telling Peggy to go to hell, and yeah. he is he admits his like guilty feelings to Bobby what like, the dog right after it happens. So it's kind of interesting that like right after he yells at Peggy, he's like, "I shouldn't have done that. You should never do that." And he's like, basically, he's feeling guilty the entire time. So yeah, good, good on Hank for actually realizing it. Jeff, yep. typically Hank has to be shown his lessons and doesn't yeah. learn them until the third act. This is a theme of a lot of episodes. We, we've we already gone through 12 of these, and I would say about yeah. half of them are like, <laughs> Hank's a huge dickhead. And <laughs> doesn't realize, doesn't realize how much of a dickhead he's being to the people who love him until yes. the very end. This time, there are stakes. Right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, she might die. Because there, he sent his wife and niece to almost certain death. Uh, so they roll up. It took right? that. Yeah, sometimes that that's too. what it takes. You know, <laughs> uh, they roll up. The tornado's already touched down. It's a wild a, scene. We get a little bit of Nancy right after the commercial break. That's her, right. Her hair's all disheveled, and she says, "Welcome back to Death Watch '97." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that. also a thing. Like anytime there's a tornado, it's like we're this is going to be all that's on TV. Yeah. This is all that you're going to see. Yeah, We're going to capitalize really, on this shit as much as we can. She's really hyping it up with calling it Death Watch 97. Yeah, clickbait uh, before clickbait yeah, she's like, existed. Remain calm, but if you have any unfinished business or you have never experienced the passion of lovemaking, now is your chance. <laughs> that was, that was, yeah. Oh, and also, it's brought to you by Megalomart, and if you lose your home, uh, you get a free bag of onions. Yeah, a bag of onions. <laughs> From the Megalomart, uh, which is a pretty good deal. Yeah. Uh so Hank shows up, this old lady is there. He immediately tells her to take Bobby and goes to run and find Peggy and Luann. This old uh, lady cracked me up. Yeah. She has like three lines that she killed it. I'm the, pretty sure that this old lady is uh Kathy and Jamie. I thought it was Cheryl Holiday uncredited. Because when oh, I looked maybe. at the credits page, Cheryl Holiday is listed as a writer and she's also listed in the cast, but she doesn't have a character name in her cast section for this episode. So my guess is that's her, maybe. She sounded like a uh, raging alcoholic a little bit. <laughs> She's as like, we, as we the... know Cheryl is. Get in the hidey hole. <laughs> yeah, Peggy and Luann are taking shelter. Hank uh, just barely hangs on to a Barely pole. hangs on. Barely hangs on to a yes, That's why we had nice. this fucker on, dude. Hell yeah. That's that's why you're on the show, Jeff. <laughs> The slow pace of him starting to just become supine hanging yeah. from the pole was very funny to me. And what grip strength, man. If oh, yeah. I had that grip strength. He's a working man, dude. It takes off all of his clothes. Literally He's, all. That was so funny. Especially Undies with the, and all. the episode starting with him being so self-conscious about being naked. Yes. Exactly. They're watching uh, on. Uh, Bobby throws the egg. Which he immediately does. splats back he into his face. The egg. Does not go through a brick wall. <laughs> uh, and then just as just as all of Hank's clothes come off and he's just professed all this is the first time he's shown any emotion in his entire life. Yeah. As he he's down, thinking apologizes. he's gonna die. Says that he loves his wife for the first time ever. He says, I love much. you and I love Bobby and I love Luann to a lesser extent. To a lesser extent. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they hit the eye of the storm, which is that a thing with, I thought that was a hurricane. Thing. Yes. 
No. Is that a, a tornado tornadoes thing? Tornadoes have eyes too. Yeah. The smaller eye. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a tinier eye. Uh, he. I didn't know up... that. That actually did teach. I I learned about tornadoes. Oh yeah. Learning it's not, as, it's not as noticeable like that like it is with a hurricane. Like geographically, the eye of a tornado is not big because tornadoes are, you know, can be tornado, tornado small, hurricane big. Yeah, I exactly. really thought that the eye of a tornado was the worst part. Well, I guess the middle part, you're kind of like almost like in a yeah. vacuum, right? It's actually the outer edges are the more dangerous parts. Yeah, that's where the cows are. Yes. Yeah. If you've seen there, are, there is a direct reference to Twister mm-hmm. uh, in this scene as well. If you've seen that Jody Jody Foster film Twister, I yeah. haven't seen Twister. <laughs> oh, it's classic. <laughs> Famously born in 1997, so we yeah. wouldn't expect you to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this fucker's strong, and he holds on. They hit the eye. Uh, he needs to cover up his shame, and for some reason, the Texas flag is on the ground, and he can't yep. cover up with that. He can't. Yeah. Use that, that would be too so much. He's so he pick the cactus. <laughs> he uses a cactus, uh, uh, and like, gets is, into the uh, Frady hole. That like, was going to be my question. Still alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he's like, "Well, is that old lady still there?" And the old lady says. Oh, don't worry about me. I've seen a barrel of pickles in my day. So this lady <laughs> She's has been seen around. a lot. Yeah. She's been around, man. My my question to y'all is, would y'all rather re- cover your dick with a cactus or the state flag of Oklahoma slash wherever in Canada? Dude, I would, I would literally wipe my ass with the Oklahoma state flag. Holy shit. Ouch. With the Osage <laughs> shield, bro? That is yeah, bro. not appropriate. That is a... <laughs> Oh. Oh, sir that you have said you were going to wipe your ass with cancel him come at yeah me. the 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 weird reverence for flags is so like yeah. nationalist well, hank loves texas he right? does absolutely loves texas he does um, i get that yeah the cactus would be enough for me that's enough coverage yeah, and if you want to come at me for the whole wiping my ass thing, like I did everything right and they indicted me. <laughs> it's fake news. Like you can't. Would you wipe it your ass? It didn't happen. With... You no, you never yeah, said it. I never said it. Would you wipe yeah. your ass with the Ohio State flag? Would oh, you absolutely. Cover up with it? You would? Absolutely. Definitely cover up and at the very least, like, yeah, have it for yeah. Clean cleansing. Clean yeah. cleaning. Yeah. It's just a corner. Just a corner of it. It's just yeah, a flag. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, they don't die. They get into the Frady hole. The trailer's mm-hmm. tipped over, so obviously Luann needs to stay. Trailer's with tipped over, yeah. I thought that was very sweet that Hank was like, "You got to stay with us now." Trailer's tipped over. Yep. This is the yeah. second time that Hank has invited Luann back into his home after kicking her out. Yeah. Second time in two seasons. Yeah, there was a similar-ish episode in the first season where mm-hmm. was, there isn't the threat of death, but it's like yeah. we got to kick Luann out because she's. She's the stepping, worst. stepping on. No. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. How do you remove we someone from a Zoom? I'll room? leave. I just, I think she was like, <laughs> I kind of sided with Hank. I'm sorry. Maybe I sided really? with the wrong she guy. Guys at weddings. She I thought he looked, funerals. I thought he looked like a scrotum and you, oh, you like that. I don't like how he looks, but Leanne also kind of looks like a scrotum. Whoa. But with an ass that we'll talk about at the end, I think. That, that won't quit. Yeah, we are, we have a whole segment about the ass. Yeah, yes. the ass segment. Uh, but yeah, really sweet little moment. Uh, also, Luann brings up Hank being, she's like, remember when Uncle Hank was naked? And Peggy was like, nope. Nope. Much like me saying the thing that about was funny. the flag. He was that like, never my underwear happened. never came off. No, yeah. all of it came off. No, it <laughs> no, didn't. No, it no, did it not. Didn't. And then they pan up, closing shot on Hank's underwear. Yeah, stuck, stuck up in a tree, uh, and that—that's where the episode ends. We don't have a post credit. Uh, that is the end of the episode. Let's just get into our penultimate segment, uh, the alley. Taking it to the alley. I'm a gonna buy you a drink. Ugh. <laughs> This is, of course, the segment of the show for everyone who obviously is a longtime listener. And for you, Jeff, is our very first guest on the Hild Kings broadcast or whatever we're calling it, where we take it out to the alley and we we bust out a case of beers. 
Yeah, and we meaning give, we give this episode a ranking on a okay. scale of one beers. How many are you drinking out of the six pack? One to six. Six one beers. beers. One Alamo one beers. beers. Okay. Six Alamo beers. It's a scale of six Alamo beers. How many are you, if you were to sit down and watch this episode, based on quality relative to beers drank? How many beers do you think you're pulling out for this one? This can I'll be a discourse. S- I'll start it out. I think for me, I'm sitting at five here for this. It was Emmy nominated. It was Emmy nominated. Um, I liked that Hank immediately recognized what he did wrong this time and immediately starts to try and go fix it, um, which is usually not his MO. So I was proud of him for that. Um, I liked a lot of the visual gags to it and I really liked Dale. Um, and then I think the conspiracies were good. This one for me stands out as, you know, it's got a lot of regional flavor with tornadoes, like storm season is something that I'm familiar with. Um, so yeah, I liked, I liked this one. I feel like it could, you know, stand alone if you, you know, ran this as a rerun in the spring. So I think it's a five for me. I think I'm keeping up with you drinking wise. I think I'm going beer for beer with you, Chris. And I'm I'm sticking at at least a five. I'm I'm pounding so maybe down. a six. I'm pounding down at least five. He's looking at the sixth. I'm looking at the sixth one. What do you think, Jeff? Where are you at beers With, wise? Well, having nothing to compare it to. I th- we got one. I think four. It's pretty fair. And then. Four and a half. So I, I drank four beers and then I opened a fifth and then I'm like, I'm just so full of liquid. You can yeah, that, that, I that is that, that is actually one. a common part of our rating scale. So I can tell you that. Then, yeah, four and a half beers. Yeah. Four and a half beers. Yeah. I think I'm I think f- for it to be five or up, I, it would have been had to have been an episode of a show that I'd never seen that I watched and then was like, I want to watch another episode of the show. So you're yeah. not I don't on, think it got me you're there. not on board with ever watching another episode of no, the next time I watch an episode, it'll be if you guys are having me back on. <laughs> so he wants to come back on, Chris. The suits work, Ooh, dude. I told you. I fucking told it you. It wasn't the suits. The suits were one of the first things that I would Ditch want to go. Ditch the suits. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to go five and a half because Jeff showed up this late is to worse. the party. Jeff showed up late to the party. So he wasn't on on the same pace as us drinking the beers. So he's gonna crack open that fourth one or fifth one and drink half of it. And I'll say I, I, I'm gonna like keep up with Jeff. And I'm gonna I'll so five beers. Up. Average is out five to five half, beers. Five That's fine. Five and a half. Five and a half. No, it averages to five. But I, we I were ahead. Half, of you. We you were said ahead. five and a half, and then well, Chris said five. five and a half. So my that evens out to five. It evens out to five. Mine is rated five and a half. It evens out to five. It evens out to five. Yeah, I'm going to go five and a half. I think this was a pretty solid episode, and it was Luann heavy, and I always love that. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the final segment of the show. God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. Bobby, 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 this is the Hill King segment of the show. Uh, we crown the MVP of the episode, the Hill okay. King, who stands supreme, Hilled the Hilled King. Uh, in the episode, any character that stood out the most in your mind, this could be on the basis of character development. It could be jokes delivered. It could be how much of a scrotum they look like or how many times they showed their feet because that mm-hmm. comes up a lot in the show. Mike Judge, we think we have a theory that he has a foot fetish because there's a lot of foot-related content of on foot references. King of the Hill. Uh, should we throw it to Jeff? Well, I know first? who you guys are going to say. Who? I think I know who Brad Leanne's is. Leanne's ass. Luann. Luann's ass. Specifically, there you was, don't know there what I'm a, gonna say. There was a couple of shots this episode where it was her from the waist down 
in the front. There were some. There were some butt the, shots. Yeah. And none of that can be like, oh, that's just the shot they set up. Like they drew no, that. On purpose. They know. They drew doing. that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeff, don't. don't I'll go, go to Luann's ass. On, don't go any further on the internet with that. Hey. I don't. I don't think I will. Again, oh. I, have, I cannot ass, stress this enough. Every man. single character in this show physically or sexually repulses me. Did um, did you have a besides Luann's behind? Did you have a favorite member of the alley or like of the tertiary characters or anything like that besides the main Dave? Dave? <laughs> Dave? Yeah. I think he's funny. Dave, friggin' Dave. He's a, he's Dave's a good one. I like Dave a lot too. I think Me I'm gonna too. go. I'm gonna go Dave. For I'm gonna go little. Dave. Yeah, whatever Brad says. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Dave. I'm gonna go with Dave. No, actually, I am going to go Dale. because Dale is what I meant. Is that his name? Yeah. Yes. Fuck. The conspiracy. <laughs> the conspiracy Shit ass. Guy. Uh, I am legitimately going Dale. This is the first Dale crowning, I believe. Might be, of, yeah. As, as Hill King. Fucking 16 episodes into the show. First Dave. His his hijinks in this episode are not a danger to anyone else, which is nice. Besides Boomhauer, but Boomhauer is going along willingly. Yeah, who you got, Chris? Who's your hill king? Um, I think for me, I'm gonna give it to this person because I don't think there's going to be a ton of other opportunities for her to earn this one. <laughs> I like the, I like Holy that shit. in this episode we got to see her doing her thing and being competent and we did not see her with john redcorn so i'm giving ah. to nancy uh nancy hicks gribble because she has some really funny lines about ah. welcome to death watch 87 get 97. a free bag of onions um yeah she she was solid in this one when yeah, it's not about to... adultery nancy yeah, we, shines this is the first time we get a little bit of dimension out of nancy because yeah. literally everything up to this point has been like yeah. haha she's the cheating wife and now yeah. we actually get her you know she's a part of the community so i'm giving it to nancy i like that truly an episode of firsts first guest first dale first luann's ass type is that the first time i sounded like She's sexualized a lot on the show. Not sexualized. She's... I like her as a character, man. Really? She's, she's, a great she's character. pure of I heart. thought you guys were, yeah. I no, thought you guys were saying she was Randy no. of Loins. She's, she is Randy of Loins. <laughs> it's an you old know, timey guy named that, Randy. That Alex Trebek. <laughs> yeah, I almost gave it to Alex Trebek. I yeah. mean, her line, her line about. <laughs> what she wants is a date with Alex Trebek, but it doesn't matter because she doesn't have a room. That like good. that line was That's so funny. Good. Yeah. And I only felt comfortable giving it to Dale because Jeff gave it to Luann. I want to make yeah, that really. very clear. I, I would have. I also gave it to Dave who doesn't exist in the show. So <laughs> I meant Dale. The Steven Root's character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's excellent. That brings us to the end of the episode of King of the Hill and the end of this here episode of this podcast. Jeff, we appreciate you being our first guest. Um, Please, thanks have, for having me. Yeah, we have. Like I, I'm honored. Few, you are. Sorry, there's this delay a little bit. <laughs> I'm honored that y'all had me on. I'm even more honored that you, you had me on as the first guest. Who do you want on second? Who can I can I help you guys get someone else? Uh, I would really uh, like Mike Oprah. Judge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you go. I don't know either of them. I meant of like people that I know. Oprah? No, you missed. So, but yeah, what I just said is I don't know Oprah. I meant of people that I know. And then you only heard people that I know and ascribed it to Oprah. People that you happened. know personally? We got to figure this. We got to figure this whole show out because I got think it, it shouldn't even be about the hill, the king of the hill anymore. Mm. King of uh the so. Jeff, would, would you be willing to come on again, even after being assaulted by Brad's soundboard? Uh, I would. It's a taste of my own medicine. Uh, <laughs> I assault Brad all the time, so in different ways. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll keep an eye out for maybe some, some good episodes for you in, the, in future seasons, perhaps. Yeah, anything you want to plug to people who watch King of the Hill and not the HeadGum podcast? Uh no, follow Brad, Bro. follow Chris, follow the Hill Kings Bro. podcast. Oh, don't don't follow Bro. me. My socials aren't out there. All right, Bro. don't follow Chris, but follow Brad. Bro. I mean, you can follow me in real life, Bro. like around and stuff. Don't do that. Just follow Brad on. Let's give him one thing to do, and let's follow Brad. Every well, no, I'd prefer they go follow the Hill Kings 
social at Hill Kings Pod. On is it my plug Pod. or is it not? Sorry. Plug. You said Jeff. What's your plug? Plug. I tr- I tried to like point people towards y'all. Plug. And now you're you're nitpicking me, man. He was William trying to be nice, style. Brad. Plug. No, and now you keep going like this, and every time you do, you're kind of hitting the sound. <laughs> <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Wait. Huh? Just the plug again thing. <laughs> <laughs> plug. I fuck. I what are your guys' fucking plugs? I appreciate the. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. I we said. Appreciate you. Go and watch us on YouTube. This is all you can see. Our beautiful little faces. We've got mm-hmm. little animations that come up. Little cartoon characters of us. The Hill King segment is animated. It's real fun. It's real good. We're also on Spotify. Uh, Jeff's cat is really cute. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Hill Kings Pod and tune in next week. I did not pull up the name of the next I episode. It. Is it Halloween? I got it, dude. No, it's Arrowhead. It's, Arrowhead. Uh, it's the episode with the artifact in the front yard. It's very funny. We'll be back for episode three next week. We appreciate y'all watching and thanks Hilt again Kings. to Jeff. Go watch the Headgum podcast Jeff. as Hilt well. Kings. I'm wearing your merch right now, Jeff. Wow. When are you guys going to do Hilt Kings podcast merch? Uh, 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 you gotta do fast. We're gonna make lockets with Luan's buttocks. We'll yeah. see you next week. <laughs> a locket with a button. See you next week. Oh. Will we? Oh. This is normally the part where I finish my beer, but I already did that. Sam. Plugs.